Chapter 7 is all about fractions, which we conveniently call rational expressions, so we can avoid the stigma that goes along with the word fraction. Now, I know you are all used to seeing 5 tenths and just instantly turning that into 1 half. However, I want to talk about what you're doing when you're reducing that 5 tenths. Technically, you're looking at the 5 and the 10, and you're saying, hey, I notice they end in a 5 and a 0, and each of them can be divided by 5. And it's in dividing the same number out of both the numerator and the denominator that we get to the fraction 1 half. We're asking, what is the least common Sorry, what is the greatest common factor of 5 and 10? And we're dividing that out of each. Notice that 5 over 5 really is a 1. And dividing by 1 gets you to an equivalent expression. 1 half is equivalent to that 5 tenths. Now, we do the same thing here. We look at the 48 and the 8. And we notice that they each can be divided by 8 as far as the a squared versus the a to the seventh, each of them can be divided by a squared. With b and b to the third, we can divide each by b. I know it's a lot quicker for us to just cancel, but um, I wanted to reinforce what we're actually doing when we're simplifying this expression. 48 divided by 8 gives us 6 in the numerator a squared divided by a squared, they're all gone. b to the third divided by b gives us b squared. Down below, 8 divided by 8, they're gone. a to the seventh divided by a to the second gives us a to the fifth. And of course, that would have been a lot easier if we just said 48 divided by 8 is the six. Noticing that there are more a's down in the denominator, giving us a to the fifth, and then there are more b's up in the numerator, giving us b to the second upstairs. But I just wanted to talk about what we're really doing through this chapter. People tend to go crazy when it comes to canceling. And it's important that you have a proper understanding of what canceling actually is. And here is a key sentence, which really is a governing statement for this whole chapter you are actually dividing both the numerator and the denominator by common factors. On a problem like this, you cannot cancel the 10 and the 2. You cannot cancel the x's because you're not canceling factors. Instead, you should factor a 5 out of the numerator to give us x plus 2. And then it's the x plus 2 not just the x with the x and the 2 with the 2. It's the whole x plus 2 with the x plus 2 that's canceling. Technically, what we're doing is we're dividing both the numerator and the denominator by x plus 2. And when you divide something by itself, you get a 1. And that's why we have that 1 up there in the numerator. Now, all we have left is 5. So a key phrase throughout this coming chapter is that of factor and cancel. You can only cancel factors, expressions that are in a multiplication problem. And I want to emphasize that word multiplication. On this next problem here, as we go to factor the numerator, x minus 8 times x plus 4, and factor that denominator, x minus 8 times x plus 8, Notice how after factoring, we have a multiplication problem. That's always true for factoring. You get parentheses times parentheses in most case. And it's these parentheses, these factors, that are then cancelable. And so we have a final answer in this case of x plus 4 over x plus 8. And that's as far as we can go in this problem. Do not attempt to cancel the 4 with the 8 because 4 is not a factor that can be divided out of both the numerator and the denominator. When you've got plus or minus signs in the middle of your numerator denominator, that messes up, so to speak, cancellation. You can only cancel when you've got multiplication in both the numerator and denominator. And that's your key phrase here. Let's do one more of these before we move on to something else. 
In this next expression, we notice that the greatest common factor in the numerator is 6p. Dividing it out, we have left over p plus 2 in the numerator. And down below, we see that we can divide out a 2p and have left over q minus 2. Now, the parentheses will not cancel. However, the p's are in a multiplication problem. They are factors of both numerator and denominator, and they can be canceled, as well as the 2 with the 6, leaving you a 3 in the numerator. So our answer here is 3 times p plus 2 over q minus 2. And the age-old question of how do you write your answer comes up. Do you leave it in this form here, factored? Or do you distribute out the numerator to write it as 3p plus 6? In one sense, on the right, that is more simplified because factoring is not simplifying. I know you all just finished a chapter on factoring, but factoring is not the simplified answers because parentheses are considered a level of sophistication. So in one sense, the, one, the expression on the right is the better answer. However, we're constantly checking that what we write down cannot be reduced. And seeing that it factors and that nothing cancels is a nice way to leave the answer also. So your teacher should accept either one of these um, as the answer.